Greetings my stargazing subscribers! In this air tutorial I will show you how to create time-lapse like star trails in Cinema 4D and Arnold. So grab your telescopes and let's go! So this is our scene here. I have taken out all the trees otherwise this would be slow as hell. Got the mountain and then a city by the base. This is what it looks like from above. The blue light here could be a moon or something. That's no moon. If we're going close you can see just how high detail the city is. But hey, it works from a distance. So other than trees, what this scene is really missing are the stars in the sky. And those are quite easy to create. I'm going to start by creating the sky itself, but I'll do that by using a new sphere. I will rename the sphere sky and make sure it's big enough to contain the entire scene. I think 5,000 centimeters should be enough. And then I'm going to rotate that around so that the top of the sphere is somewhere in frame, which gives a pleasant composition, because that's going to be where our North Star is. Then I'll also give it twice as many segments just to make it nice and smooth. I will then group the sphere into a null object, which I will call Sky, and then group that one more time into a null I will call Stars. So that's just our sky, and now for the stars, I want to create a new null object, which I will place in a cloner object. In that cloner object, I will need to change from linear mode to object mode, and for the object, I'll use the sky sphere that I just created. This also changes the distribution from vertex to surface, and then I can just enter the number of stars I want. I think there are about 9096 visible stars in the sky, and we're seeing only one hemisphere at once, so I think 6000 is enough. Obviously these null objects are not going to render, but the point was never to make stars, it was to make star trails. So with our cloner object selected, let's create a tracer object and then jump to the first frame and spin this sky around. So at frame 0, I'll set a keyframe for the heading and then jump ahead maybe a hundred frames and spin the sphere around along the y-axis. Now the sun rises in the east, sets in the west, at least on my planet. That means that we need to rotate the sky counterclockwise. I'm going to have it complete a full rotation, so I will set that to minus 360 degrees. I'll select both of those keyframes I have and make sure they are linear, just so it's a constant speed of rotation. And then I'll check in our tracer object. Yep, the cloner is our trace link, and even though they're just null objects, it's still going to trace the positions. And our tracer object just paints the sky full of star trails. I will then stop that right around frame 100 and I will make my tracer editable by right clicking and selecting current state to object and then I will disable both the tracer object, the cloner and the sky and hide those away. And now I just have tons and tons of highly detailed splines for the star trails. Obviously they're not showing up in the render yet if we turn on the IPR, partly because we don't have a material. So let's create a new Arnold shader and we will use a standard surface material, turn down the diffuse to zero, but turn up the emission to one. Let's smack that right onto our star trails and still nothing in the IPR, but let's just add a quick Arnold tie to this object. And Arnold will recognize this as being splines and it will start rendering them. I do want these trails slightly thicker, so I'll set those to five. And then just draw a quick little curve here just so it tapers off and then just adjust it so it tapers off nicely. By default, the rendering mode is set to ribbon, which means they're just flat angled towards the camera, and I want it set to thick, so there's actual thickness to it. Right, that's us done, playing around in that tag for a while. Let's go back to the material and set that one up properly. Right now, they're all just white stars, and I'm going to colorize these slightly using the utility shader. Now let's drag that in and link it up to the Arnold Beauty port. And now what you see isn't all that different, but I'll change the shading mode from ND to I to flat, and the color mode from color to uniform ID. That's going to give each spline a random color. Not the random colors we want, but with a bit of trickery, we can remap these to the colors we do want. I'm going to create a color correction node and link that one in after the utility shader. And I'll use that to get rid of all the colors that we don't want anyway. Turn down the gamma to 0.1 and turn up the exposure to something like 2. So now all of our trails have a random value between black and white, which we will use to colorize them. And then I will create a new node. This is going to be a ramp RGB node. I'll drag in and then Alt drag on top of the color correct node. Insert that after using the input. 
And then we can use that to give our stars whatever color we want. Probably not going to want them red and blue. So I have this star trails gradient prepared, which I just sampled from actual images of star trails. So it should be pretty accurate. And these are the actual colors I want to use. So I will just link this ramp RGB to the emission color of our standard shader and link its output to the Arnold Beauty board. And I also want to go in and increase the emission scale to two. And that's just going to make these stars really nice and bright. But everything is a bit too bright. All these trails are too long and we need to control these somehow. Let me first turn off the IPR so everything runs a bit quicker. And then I will go up to MoGraph and create a MoSpline object. And actually, let's turn on the IPR for a second. Let's turn off our trace splines for a second. And let's move the Arnold tag and material over to our Mo spline. Let's change our mode on the Mo spline from simple to spline. And under the spline tab, let's drag in our traced spline. And just like that, we have our stars back. But with the Mo spline, we get some control over them. Using the start and end position, we can control right now exactly how many trails there are, which is not quite what we want. So if we change the grow mode from complete spline to separate segments, now when we tweak the end value, it kind of stretches out the star trails as if the stars were moving. And this is just what we want when animating this. So let's set some keyframes for this. Let's jump to the start and set the end value to 0.1%. Set a keyframe for both that and the start value. And we jump to the end of the scene and increase these by exactly the same amount so that the start value is 0.1% less than the end value. So now we will have stars in the sky at the start and stars in the sky at the end. If we play our animation through, we will see that they just calmly rotate up there in the sky. Just like any normal night, only hundreds of times quicker. Now to get these to stretch out into actual star trails, we need to access our timeline. In here, we will find the keyframes for our most spline. We'll find the star keyframes and end keyframes, and I will begin by tweaking the end keyframes. I want the end point to start moving slightly quicker than the start point, because that's what's going to give us these trails. So I will set the time for the first end keyframe to maybe around 20 frames. Then I want it to slow down at the end a bit slower than the start point would do. So I will set the time on that one to maybe 35 frames. Now let's go up and change our start point keyframes. And I want those to be completely the other way around. So I want it to start slowly and end quickly. So for the start keyframe, I will set the time to 35 frames. And on the end keyframe, for the start point, I will set the time to 20 frames. Now let's give that another play three. And we see the stars go from tiny points, stretch out into these lovely trails. And then as they slow down towards the end, they start going back into just little points. And that's basically all there is to it. You can do most of this in pretty much any render engine if you just replace the Arnold tag with a regular sweep nerbs on the most spline, and then just shade accordingly. So until next time, enjoy your CG Star Trail time lapses and stay in motion. Oh,